Welcome to this Biofilm Q tutorial. My name is Eric and today I will show you how you can export the extracted parameters to different file formats. Here I have a time series which is already segmented. In previous tutorials we extracted different parameters from this time series. You can find the download link for the rare data set on the Biofilm Q website. To export the parameters to another file format, we have to go to the Data Export tab in the Image Processing window. At the top, you can find a table with all already calculated parameters. This overview is quite useful if you are unsure whether you already calculate a certain parameter or not. By selecting the checkbox store, you can decide whether the parameter should be included in the exported file. If the size of the exported files is small compared to the image data, and you are comfortable in scrolling through all the parameters in your third-party program, you do not really need to exclude parameters from the export. The only point is to reduce the file size and quicker access the most important parameters. Below the table, you can find the checkbox File Naming. If you enable this option, the file name only consists of the frame number. This option was necessary since some third-party programs require the frame number to be the only index in the file name for recognizing time series. At the bottom, you have three different tabs for three different output types. You can create 3D visualization files. You can create flow cytometry standard files. And you can create CSV files, which can be opened by any default spreadsheet software. Let's focus first on the 3D visualization files. At the bottom, you can decide which output format you want to use. You can use either the VDK format which can be visualized by the 3D rendering software Paraview. Or you can pick the STL format, which is a default exchange format for CAD files. You can find a list of programs which support this file format on Wikipedia, for example. In our case, we use the STL format to create files which can be, can be printed by a 3D printing company. At first, they struggled to print our biofilms because they had multiple object IDs in it. This is the reason why we included the checkbox force one object ID only in Biofilm Q. In this tutorial, I will show you the VTK format. Above the file format selection, you have the option to rotate the biofilm by a certain number of degrees around one of the three major axes, and you can reduce the size of polygons by a factor. Let me quickly show you what the influence of this option on your 3D visualization files is. First, we need to create two datasets with different file naming. So I quickly enable the checkbox to create files which do not have a reduced number of polygons. Next, we create a dataset where we reduce the number of polygons by a factor of 0.3. The default factor should work quite well for all datasets we have seen so far. In the data subfolder of our experiment folder, you can see that we now created two different VTK time series. One time series only has the frame number as a file name. This is our time series where we haven't reduced the number of polygons. And one time series where we have the full file name, this is where we reduce the 
polygon number by a factor of 0 0.3. The first difference you can see is that the file size is reduced by a factor as well. If we now open those two time series in Paraview, we can see that if we don't reduce the polygon number, we can see different layers in our 3D visualizations. This is due to the segmentation approach, which is voxel-based in Biofilm Q. If we reduce the number of polygons, also this layering effect is reduced. You can see that the cells are a little bit smoother than in the case before. If you want to export your data set to a flow cytometry software, for example, Flojo, you can use the FCS file format. You just have to press export in the flow cytometry tab and a new output folder will be created, FCS output. Here you can find all the exported files. The process works the same way for CSV files. Just press export and a new output folder will be created. In this case, the output folder is called txt output and you can find for every frame number two different datasets. One dataset contains the per cube parameters and the next data sets with the global suffix contain the global parameters. In the file with the local parameters, you have a massive spreadsheet where every single row corresponds to a cube in your segmented data set. In the global data set, you have a single line for every frame, since it calculates the global parameters for this frame. This was our short tutorial on BiofilmQ. If you are interested in other workflows, please refer to our other tutorials.